Dr. Sage here. In this video, we're going to discuss antimicrobial resistance. By the end of this video, you should be able to discuss two possible ways that microbes acquire antimicrobial resistance, list five cellular or structural mechanisms that microbes use to resist antimicrobials, and discuss at least three novel antimicrobial strategies that are under investigation. Drug resistance is an adapted response in which microorganisms begin to tolerate an amount of drug that would ordinarily be inhibitory. This is due to the genetic versatility and adaptability of microbial populations. Intrinsic resistance, bacteria must be resistant to any antibiotic that they themselves produce. Acquired resistance, bacterial resistance to a drug to which they were previously sensitive. How does drug resistance develop? Well, one method is through spontaneous mutation. When there's a mutation, there is a minimal chance the mutation will be advantageous. Smaller chance the mutation will confer drug resistance. However, large microbial populations and constant rate of mutation ensure that such mutations do occur. Another way drug resistance develops is through horizontal gene transfer. Resistance, or R factors, are plasmids that are transferred through conjugation, transformation, or transduction. Transposable drug resistance sequences, or transposons, are duplicated and inserted from one plasmid to another or from the plasmid to the chromosome. This accounts for the rapid proliferation of drug resistant species. Gene transfers are extremely frequent in nature, and genes from unrelated bacteria, viruses, and other organisms live in the body's normal biota and environment. So, what are the mechanisms of drug resistance? Well, one way, is new enzymes can be synthesized. These enzymes can inactivate the drug and only occurs when new genes are acquired. Another method is to decrease the permeability or uptake of the drug into the bacteria. This usually occurs through mutation or a drug can be immediately eliminated. This usually occurs via acquisition of new genes. Another method is binding sites for the drug can be decreased in number or affinity. This can occur via mutation or acquisition of new genes, or an effective metabolic pathway is shut down or an alternative pathway is used. This occurs due to mutation of the original enzyme or enzymes. Any large population of microbes is likely to contain a few individual cells that are naturally drug resistant. If the drug is not present in the population, the number of these resistant forms will remain low. If the population is exposed to the drug, sensitive individuals will be killed and the resistant forms will remain. As the population exposed to the antibiotic proliferates, offspring of the resistant microbes will inherit drug-resistant genes. The replacement population will have a preponderance of drug-resistant forms. Eventually, the population will become completely resistant. In other words, the more fit microbe has survived in the environment of the antibiotic. So what is the human role in antimicrobial resistance? About 75% of antimicrobial prescriptions are for throat, sinus, lung, and upper respiratory infections, the majority of which are likely viral and will not benefit from antibacterial drugs. The hospital environment continually exposes pathogens to a variety of drugs. Hospitals house susceptible patients with weakened defenses. Also, the hospital workforce may not strictly adhere to universal precautions, and this has led to penicillin resistance in nearly 100% of all Staphylococcus aureus strains within just 30 years. How about drugs and animal feeds? Well, nearly 80% of all antibiotics in the United States are given to livestock. This allegedly decreases infections and improves animal health and size. However, enteric bacteria share resistance plasmids that are constantly selected and amplified by exposure to drugs. These pathogens can then jump to humans and cause drug-resistant infections. The majority of infectious diseases are showing drug resistance in all areas of the world. Global travel and globalization of food products has allowed rapid export of drug resistance. So in the past, to develop new antimicrobial therapy, we try to find new targets in the bacteria cell and then custom design drugs that aim for these new targets. However, a novel approach is disabling host molecules that the invaders use to enhance their position. Good news is that there is now an uptick in research into novel antimicrobial strategies. One way of helping nature along is through probiotics. Probiotics are preparations of live microorganisms fed to animals and humans to improve intestinal biota. This replaces microbes lost during antimicrobial therapy. It augments the biota already there. One example of this you've probably heard of is probiotic yogurt. This is safe, effective, and useful in treating food allergies. Another method is prebiotics. These are nutrients that encourage the growth of beneficial microbes in the intestine. For example, fructums encourage the growth of bifidobacterium in the large intestine 
and discourage the growth of pathogens. An example of a prebiotic would be fiber. Another way of helping nature along is through fecal transplants. This is a treatment for reoccurring clostridium infections. It involves the transfer of feces containing beneficial normal biota from a healthy person to an infected patient via colonoscopy. All right, this has been your overview of antimicrobial resistance. Until next time, this has been Dr. Sage.